everybody, it is me, Fazer Bunny, and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So today we are building a French style house called the Petit Chateau. This house has two bedrooms and two bathrooms, so it's a little bit smaller than my usual house, that's why I called it the Petit Chateau. But before anything else, I just want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. Apologies if you guys can hear all of that traffic noise outside. I have been incredibly busy this past week. We had a long holiday week weekend so my mom flew over we hung out we actually just got back from a movie night last night and it was amazing we watched crazy rich asians and it was so much fun i'm probably gonna be talking about that in another video also i saw the doctor i had my ears checked and the good news is i no longer have the ear infection so after three trips to the doctor and six weeks of suffering i am cured okay enough of the random story talk and let's get back into to the build so um this build is actually very reminiscent of another build i did probably about a year and a half ago called the suburban chateau um so when i was building this i was like okay you know what it's probably gonna be like another version of that build so i wasn't really particularly excited or thrilled about it but um at some point i think towards the end of the build i realized that holy crap i think i just built one of my favorite builds of all time it turned out so good i had no expectations for it whatsoever and it just blew my mind how well it turned out um i'm probably tooting my own horn a little bit but you guys will be surprised at how good it actually turned out especially as we get into the interior because for for the part where i was building the exterior i was like okay you know what it's really like it's practically the same as my suburban chateau build. Yes, it's a little bit different, but um, yeah, I was like, I almost came super close to actually scrapping this build because, you know, I wasn't building anything new or anything. Like, I built a couple of French style builds before, so um, I was like, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe nobody wants to watch this. Maybe people are gonna say, like, you know, seen it, been there, done that. But I'm so glad I actually finished it because I'm so proud of this you guys like if you put these two builds side by side this one and the suburban chateau you'll see how much i've actually grown as a builder and as a designer this past year who knew um so um yeah at this point i was still a little bit tentative i was like okay you know what i feel like i've seen this before like it uses a lot of details that i have used so many times in other builds before like this um two-story archway entrance the roof is a little bit unique though, I will give myself that. It's a very similar roof to another French style build I did before which is the Summer Dream House which um, has a roof that goes from the lower floor to the upper floor and it connects and it forms this really interesting shape. But I think I started to actually have some hope left in this build when I actually made this garage. So I found this item, I'm assuming it came with Jungle Adventure, it's this archway right here. It fits perfectly in this garage spot and it just makes it look really really good. Like it looks like an actual French style house, you know, you would see like in you know mansions all over the world so i was like okay you know what this is starting to look promising so um at this point i was like you know what let's just have fun and just let's just do the best we can because at this point i think i decided that okay you know what whatever happens i am gonna put this up so you better you better work um so um yeah <laughs> anyway um for the exterior, obviously, I said earlier, this is a French chateau inspired. So it does have a lot of details that are kind of typical features of French style architecture, such as the quote unquote mansard roof. It's not really a mansard roof, but it kind of looks like it. Um, it also has a lot of columns and these elaborate um, moldings outside. So to contrast with that, I chose like a really, really simple and plain wall texture because I didn't really feel like it was necessary to have so much stuff going on outside. We have these archways, we have these crazy like, you know, dormer windows and all this crazy stuff. So for the outside wall paint, I just chose some really nice kind of like beige colors, warm tones to contrast with the really white column details. And I also added like a little extra um, accent wall which I think came with 
um, fitness stuff and it's like this like um, rough tile texture um, it's really nice it's this really nice warm brick color anyway for the interior um, as I mentioned earlier this house only has two bedrooms and two bathrooms so that's a little bit small typically I usually go for at least three bedrooms in my builds but this house actually has a lot of space um, so it wouldn't be that difficult to actually expand and actually have more rooms in this house. Um, there's a little office area on this ground floor level which can easily be turned into a third bedroom. Oh my gosh, let me just say the interior, I, I don't think I've ever done like an interior that's as good as this. Um, which is really interesting because when you think about it, I really didn't do anything too too crazy You know, there's no split leveling. There's like no crazy, you know, high ceiling, whatever. It's just really well decorated um, Which is kind of strange too because when you really look at it for most of the interior I only used one wallpaper which is surprising I even shocked myself when I think about it to be honest I, I just used this one wallpaper I'm not sure what it came with it might have been like a free patch or something but it's this plain white wallpaper with some like wainscoting and it's just yeah I just used the plain white one um, my, my, my inspiration for the interior by the way is Provence um, so um, I went for like this French countryside, maybe slightly southern, um, but you know, Provence has a lot of white and it also has a lot of warm colors, but I was just so inspired by this blue fireplace that I ended up using more of like a white and a cool color. Uh, color scheme for the interior, which I thought really worked and for some reason it still looked really Provence to me I don't know why um, some of you guys might disagree, but I think so. I think it looked nice um, So for this main living area nothing too too crazy It's just you know a lot of functional areas sitting areas and um, Some bookcases, which I actually really like that wall. I do take up I do take out one of the bookshelves and replace it with a window because I want the light to flood in. Um, also, this room has, I think, um, it has like a chest table as well, just to add a little bit more functional stuff to it. I put the chest table in the little bay window area thing, and it actually works surprisingly, which makes me so happy because. Most often than not, I place an item and I immediately assume that it's not gonna work because, you know, it interacts with way too much stuff. It's in a way, it, it's in a really cramped space. And then I test it out with my sim and then it actually works. Um, but yeah, I do take out the curtains in this room because I felt like it looked really busy. I think I don't put curtains on the ground floor because I just felt like everything looked so busy I didn't need the curtains so I do take those out eventually but I really really love the clutter items in this room and yeah um, it still really boggles my mind how I was able to pull this off only using one wallpaper with a couple of accent walls but for the most part I only used one type of wallpaper which is crazy anyway working on the kitchen this is actually my favorite favorite room in the entire house and it's probably like one of my favorite kitchens I've ever done so it has the usual tropes that I've seen so many people do and that is to put skylights in everybody's builds which is fine because everybody you know is enamored with skylights at the moment and so am I so we had to have it it's not as prominent of a feature though in this build it's kind of just like tucked in the side but I thought that it was incorporated really really well and in a way that was really realistic um, but speaking of the kitchen um, I just went for like this countryside look um, you guys won't see me do it because I wasn't able to record it because I added it really really late but I actually put like these um, ceiling details on the kitchen using these um, archway things I don't know what those are called like, like those core bill things and it looks amazing you guys will see it in the house tour but I love it. it it looks so awesome and then right next to the kitchen there is this little breakfast area um, so it has the circular table with four chairs and um, it's just a nice little breakfast area you know um, for those who do not want to use this 
um, formal dining room. So this right here is the formal dining room. I decided to add a bay window for this room just to make things a little bit interesting and I really really wanted to incorporate that um, bay window seat. I don't know. Bay window chair? I don't know what it's called but it's the one that came with pets. I think I used a lot of pets in this because all of the blues and the white colors just matched so well. Um, surprisingly, this build did not turn out nautical, which is awesome. Anyway, so this is the formal dining room. Once again, if you guys probably want to add more bedrooms, the formal dining room could easily be turned into another bedroom actually because technically we already have a dining room in the kitchen area. Oh, and of course I threw in this little flower arranging thing. Um, so yeah, by the way, this flower arranging thing, actually just doing this build in general reminded me so much of my mom. Like I could not stop thinking of my mom while I was doing this build um, because I think doing this really brought me back to when I was younger. I was raised in a really, really small town and my mom, she loved flower arranging like she loved arranging flowers so our house used to be filled with her flower creations and even some of the like prominent members of the town that we lived in would ask her to decorate their house with her flower arrangement or even like for the holidays she would be the go-to decorator and of course she would do it for free because my mom she is um she's actually a licensed nurse and right now she works at a hospital as um uh I'm literally giving you guys my mom's biography, but yeah, she works at a hospital as um, a human resource manager um, So literally every time like the doctors would ask her. Oh, hey, can you decorate my house? Like I need like a new flower arrangement. She would be like, oh, yeah, sure. That'd be fine. I, I'll do it for free um, Yeah uh, but Literally like every time I think of flower arranging my mind immediately goes to my mom because literally my room had like this giant flower <laughs> creation that my mom did and it was awesome. I loved it. Anyway, this room that we're working on right now is like a little office. Um, I imagine the person living here to be really really into books. Maybe historical literature like Jane Austen novels or something like that which to be honest is just me. Um, <laughs> literally this is actually just myself projecting into The Sims. Uh, the house that I want for myself in the future. I mean, I would literally like love to live here. Anyway, um, I wouldn't mind living in a modern house as well. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, this um, little office area, it's just a really fun room. I actually had a lot of fun furnishing this because it was kind of like an interesting shape because it had that diagonal wall. Uh, but yeah, I think I also put in some fairy lights as well just to add some some accents and stuff And I also put those raunchy freaking um, You know sketches which I'm like are they allowed to do that aren't those a little bit raunchy? Um, but yeah, I put it there and it's fine. Anyway, oh the train is passing by. I'm so annoyed um, Yeah, I probably would have been better off waiting for a better timing to record this but if I really had to wait it would have probably have taken me a couple more days to get this video up so I'd rather record this right now with the train running than just wait a couple more days when I'm free again to record this voiceover because literally I have recorded everything else I needed for the video like I've recorded the house tour which typically I record last after I've recorded the voiceover so yeah it is what it is so anyway um hopefully you guys aren't too bothered by it anyway oh my gosh what's interesting about the shape of this house is that i kept adding adding to it like as i was building the interior and this is another feature that got added quite late i didn't plan on adding in this little turret area at first because if i added it it would have been like literally too too similar to my suburban chateau build i know the turret for this one is at the back and the suburban chateau one was in the front but um i have to say i love that i actually included that turret against my will because at the end it's become one of my favorite features of this house actually um surprisingly when you look at it from afar it kind of reminds me of like 
the house from the movie Cinderella, like the 1950s ones. I don't know. Um, but yes, working on the master bedroom. I love this room. It is so spacious and so awesome and so bright um, and so blue as well. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really love this room. I was able to incorporate a lot of stuff that I normally wouldn't be able to incorporate in my builds because they would be too big for the room that I had. Um, so this room has a dresser. It also has another walk-in closet in the area right next to the bathroom. And it also has like its own little breakfast area, which is quite unusual for a build that I would do. But I really wanted to have like a nice city seating area right next to this bay window type area. With, and I, I thought that a nice little breakfast nook would be perfect for that. And of course, I had to cut out a lot of this bills because I didn't want the video to go on for too long. But yeah, for the master bedroom, there is also this kind of like media entertainment area. So, you know, if she wants to watch movies or he or whatever, whoever lives here, they want to watch movies, um, you know, they can watch it from their bedroom. Um, <laughs> yes. And then this is like the sort of like walk-in closet area. You guys can see it on the left. Um, I actually had to build a wall to put that mirror on a diagonal. And I also put like a little computer over here because everybody needs one in their bedroom. Like, I couldn't imagine like working in a separate office to be honest, like in my house. So yeah, I don't know why. Anyway, so, oh yeah, what's interesting about this house is that I actually recorded both times when I was furnishing the bathrooms, I know. Um, typically, I would only keep one bathroom in, and I would typically keep the more interesting one. But for this build, I actually kept in both bathrooms because I actually really, really like how I furnished both of them. So I was like, you know what, just throw them in. No one cares. It's gonna be, you know, making the video maybe like a minute longer. So it's fine. At least you guys saw it. Um, but yeah, both bathrooms are quite different. I personally like the bathroom on the guest room a little bit more as opposed to this one because it had a shower. <laughs> it also had an interesting shape despite the fact that the bathroom on the guest room was a little bit smaller. I do prefer it more than the master bathroom because it just looked a lot more interesting. And you guys will see what I'm talking about when we get there in just a little bit. But this right here is the guest bedroom. And yes, I did plan for this to be the guest bedroom because I uh, imagine the person living here to really relish in their solitude and just enjoy being by themselves and, you know, just, just, you know, occasionally maybe having some people stay over which is also why I had like such a large entertainment area downstairs but for the most part they live by themselves and it's fine uh, they have a lot of fun doing so um, but yeah for this guest bedroom there's really nothing to do crazy happening here there is um, a bookshelf and a dresser though which or like a vanity so that's cool once again, the vanities, I never really get to incorporate them in the builds because they're just take up too much space, I think. Um, but since the bedrooms in this one were actually quite big, I was able to fill them up with some really awesome and functional items. Um, oh my gosh, this is the bathroom that I was talking to you guys about and look at how awesome it is. I like this little nook with a bathtub. I think it's different and awesome. I also really like how this is the room that has a shower um but you know I, I i thought that it was important to at least have a shower option just so that you know if they prefer to take a shower and not a bath they could do so especially like if they're rushing like i know that if my sim is in a rush i would definitely make them take the shower not a bath anyway so i think for the most part that is pretty much done for the interior and now all that le all that's left is doing the exterior which was also so much fun to do um i love doing this trellis area once again it was kind of like a, an afterthought that i wasn't really planning on incorporating at first but I really really love this. I didn't like overload the trellis with too much plants because I felt like, you know, I didn't need to. Um, so I just put a couple of, you know, nice um, cluster of leaves on top of them. And I love these chairs. These chairs I believe need to be unlocked. But they're so awesome. I like the, the 
like the watercolor hand painting details on those chairs, they looked really rustic and Provence style to me. Um, and yeah, I, I just really like this area. I did look up, you know, Provence style homes online, and yes, I did see that a lot of them had this like trellis area because I believe it's in the southern part of Spain. It's France. <laughs> see, I literally mess up like when I immediately when I tried to be be like more academic about things but yeah Provence is in France by the way not in Spain and I think it's like somewhere near the Mediterranean I'm assuming because like judging from the images I've seen it has like a lot of those like really warm deserty climates so I'm assuming that's it oh, I probably should have researched a little bit more on this Anyway, so yes, this is me just positioning the house and, um, you know, putting some hedges on the backyard just to add a little bit more privacy. I love this little pathway right here. It's gravel. I don't know why, but it is so satisfying to hear the crackling of gravel. I don't know why. It's probably just me. I'm just probably weird like that, but hearing the gravel crackling uh, just makes me feel so satisfied. It reminds me of my parents' driveway. Um, <laughs> yes, hashtag nostalgia though. Um, but yeah, um, I really, really love how it looks right now. I think it actually looks really realistic. Um, I added these bougainvillea flowers. I've never used these before. I was a little bit concerned that they would look really fake and plasticky. But I think when you actually put them in just the right areas, they would actually look really good. Uh, so I was really happy that I was able to try new things in this build, such as this one, the Bougainvillea flowers. I, I, I thought that they looked really, really good. So I put a couple in front and I also put a couple at the back as well. Um, and then basically for the landscaping, my inspiration was kind of like a mix between contemporary like suburban McMansion type landscaping mixed with maybe like some French details as well. So there's a couple of like areas where it's kind of like formal gardens with fountains and stuff like that. The fountains, by the way, there are two fountains in this house and the inspiration for those was Aix-en-Provence, which is a city in Provence which is known for its fountains, I think. Um, so yeah, that's a little nod to that as well. Also another inspiration for the gardening um, was actually Giverny, um, the famous house of the infamous artist Claude Monet. Um, and yeah, it's it's you guys will see a little bit of that when I actually start putting in the plants. But this little area right here, I also really love. It's kind of like a little flower and vegetable garden. Um, so yes, this build does come packaged with some summer herbs and flowers. Um, because when I recorded the walkthrough, it was summertime, so those were the ones that are available in season. And by the way, when I was filming the walkthrough, I chanced upon this weather phenomenon wherein the game had like some sort of like a heat wave. And oh my gosh, I've never seen the game look so good. Um, I've never heard anyone talk about the heat waves before, but it looks so amazing. Like all of the like heat rippling effects on the environment reminds me so much of like, <laughs> I don't know, this is so weird, but like call me by your name, like when Elio was in his villa and it was just like so awesome to look at and I think this part in Windenburg is perfect for that like type of environment um, which is kind of like this warm European region type of thing. You guys will see what I'm talking about later on but yeah I think that just inspired me so so much. Um, but yeah, I'm just adding in the flowers now and you guys can see like the inspiration of Giverny which is kind of like more of like I guess sort of like overgrown a lot of like vertical growing plants and bulbs and just um yeah anyway um provence is known for its lavenders though so i knew that i had to put some lavenders and some sunflowers in the flower beds um but yeah i love the organic feel of these gardens i also snuck in like a little duck sculpture over there just this a little bit of a 
you know, Easter egg type of thing. But I do think that this video is coming to an end. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my commentary right here. As always, you guys, if you share the video, it's really going to help out the channel a lot. And also leaving a like and a comment will be very much appreciated as well. And don't forget to subscribe so you guys can be a part of the channel as well. So that being said, you all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.